Welcome to another episode of Summing Up. For those which are new to the show, Summing Up is about the latest XSpace++ update from Alaska Software. Today we are talking about build 785. So let's start. Build 785 focuses basically on two areas, features and fixes, as always, of course. This time, we concentrated in terms of features on finalizing the PostgreSQL ESAM emulation. We will talk about this in more detail later on. In terms of fixes, we closed a couple of work items and PDRs, mostly related to web UI and to, of course, to the debugger. With web UI, we clarified that we definitively support UDF 8 as an input stream for web UI and the documentation. So let's have a look into what did we with the PostgreSQL engine. The PostgreSQL ESAM feature get finally added the positional interface. The positional interface is known to the ESAM developers um, with the db position and the dbgo position uh, functions. They are basically used to, put, to do a navigation. It can be a physical navigation in means of record numbers or a logical navigation in means of uh, the logical order uh, established by indexes. Uh, and the navigation is done using a percentage. So going to 50% means going into the middle of the table, so to speak. Or if we are talking about a logical order, going into the middle of the logical order. And DB position returns the current position, DB go position moves the record pointer to that position. With the PostgreSQL ESAM feature in the past, we haven't supported that, which meant it's uh, well, it's not possible to migrate existing XSpace++ applications which use the XSpace Web Browse and the navigation interface and the scroll bar behavior, because for that you need to have that specific feature. Um, <clears throat> so let's have a look how it is in practice. For that I'm <clears throat> using the um, XSpace++ samples. When you, when you go into Help, Desktop Samples, under Basics, you will find a subdirectory GUI Browse. And this project shows you different use cases and scenarios for the XPP Browse class. Um, <clears throat> and typically you select file like a customer DBF table, and then you browse it in that simple use case here. I have adapted that original sample by just adding uh, here we are, but just adding a uh, load of the Postgres database engine here, um, doing some connection work here to get connected to the Postgres SQL Server, and then still I'm now continuing with my original um, ESAM code, which means I'm using a table, I'm doing my go top, my go button, for example, in that case, I'm creating a user interface, dialog, a browse, which I want to show. So we need to look into the browser and see here, I'm using standard skip, go top, go bottom blocks, and I'm here using the go pass block, uh, the positional interface. So this is a standard XBB browse, no magic. And um, let's see how it works on the SQL. Here we have the browse. I can uh, maybe I should make a little bit closer. You see now I have a scroll bar, and now I'm using the scroll bar. And I can use the scroll bar to do the navigation. What happens behind the scene? I'm using the scroll bar to do the navigation. The scroll bar position is a position which is returned as a percentage. The percentage is used to navigate on the table. And this way we have uh, XBB Browse support even on the PostgreSQL server side. <coughs> So what's the difference between using a browse and a list view? Well, the point is, with a browse, I'm navigating on the real data. While with a list view, I'm typically having a copy of the data into my main memory. For example, let's see here, <coughs> Mr. Feldman. And I'm now starting a other desktop symbol. This one, MDI demo. The MDI demo I have already recompiled to use the um, Postgres uh, SQL support. So I have here last name Hellstrom, and I make Hell way out of him. So I changed that data. 
And when I now go into the browse, here there is house drum. When I now do the navigation, see, it automatically changed. So the point with the XP browse is it's navigating on the real data on the server. It's not having a copy. That's a big difference between list views and the XPP browse. And that's why the positional interface is so important because as ESAM developer, you know, um, real-time data processing is an important thing for your customers to give them a better user experience. So, say that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, with the uh, uh, ESAM emulation and the positional interface, there's an additional prerequisite which was not required with the past PostgreSQL ESAM support. We are now, we now need PostgreSQL Server version 9 or higher. This is because only version 9 of the PostgreSQL Server has some specific strategies in place to do the proper optimization on behalf of the server to have a proper performance for the DB position, DB go position uh, capabilities. Another area which we fixed on the PostgreSQL ESAM emulation was the DBSeq. There have been a couple of worst case scenarios reported by our customers which have rather large applications tried or already successfully moved over from the DBF CDX DBF NTX world to the PostgreSQL ESAM emulation. And they encountered areas where a seek operation has taken more than 10 seconds, even 20 seconds, 25 seconds for a seek. Of course, there have been worst case tables, which means a record of a table had a size of three, four, five kilobyte. So hundreds of fields in a single uh, table. And the tables had uh, <clears throat> hundreds of thousands of records, which means one million or something like that. So finally, <clears throat> we have been able to identify the root cause of these worst case scenarios and have been able to develop an alternate strategy and the seek algorithm of the PostgreSQL ESAM emulation. And we are now down to a couple of milliseconds, which means we are all set because now, even in worst case scenarios, assuming the server is probably set up, um, we can guarantee you that your PostgreSQL experience in general in means of seeing and navigation is faster than your DBF CDX or DBF NTX multi-user case. So the big question is what is our recommendation? We recommend that you use DBF CDX files when you are doing high performance local file data management. For example, when you want to gather data from sensors Use the DBF CDX. Nothing is faster than storing data in your local DBF table. You cannot reach that performance with a SQL Server system. Or if you are doing <coughs> an application server, the application server runs on the same machine, so you can have your data also on the same machine. Data and logic on the same place is the fastest scenario. So why not create your application server, expose the interfaces using a web handler and a RESTful interface type, have it deployed into a virtual machine and do, and do the backup of the whole virtual machine. Though, so you are backing up the data and your application. It's all in one, it, it's, a, it's a unit and it works. And if somebody else needs your data, use RESTful interfaces to get the data. Another scenario is when you want to store non-secure data on your web application because you have some notebook or whatever data, <clears throat> well, then use DBF CDX tables on your web server because <clears throat> nothing is faster. You don't need to have a SQL server to store the data. This overhead can be avoided. Use DBF CDX tables, which are shared between all your uh, web pages executing on the same machine. When you do the backup, anything is backed up, so it's a fine thing. Well, when do you use the PostgreSQL server? <clears throat> when you're creating new applications where you want to share data, it's a mission critical application, then we recommend to use the PostgreSQL server and the PostgreSQL ESAM emulation if you like. You can continue with your <clears throat> existing knowledge, meaning you see your go top, bottom, seek, filter, skip, whatever. But have a look into the universal SQL feature. At least start to have a look into the select statement and see how easy it is to do the query processing compared to the navigational approach with ESAM commands. 
Um, we also recommend to use PostgreSQL Server and the PostgreSQL Database Engine as an alternative to the Advantage Database Server. And if you're suffering, a, if you are having performance problems with your existing XBase++ solutions in the field, which are using DBF CDX or DBF index tables, and we are talking about more than three or five users, then we also recommend to move over to PostgreSQL Server and the ESAM emulation because you gain performance and reliability. So, said that, thanks for watching this episode of Summing Up. I hope you have enjoyed to get some information about the details we changed in the last four weeks on the product and delivered to you with the latest update. And hope to see you next time.